In today's video, I'm going to show you how to structure your Django backend API in a way that can later be much easier to scale up. This is going to be a monolithic project, although we'll be creating our Django apps in a way where they are isolated from one another and responsible for a very specific type of service in our overall application. We'll also have these different Django apps have their own database, so you'll see how you can manage multiple databases in Django, as well as how to isolate apps from one another and have them be responsible for a very specific task. And on top of that, I'll show you how you can also have different types of users in your application. So there will be a lot of high level content covered in this series that is difficult to find anywhere else, which should make for a very eye opening series for a lot of you. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I release videos like this each and every week. So if you don't want to miss out, then do make sure to smash the absolute heck out of that subscribe button. So have you ever wondered how to manage multiple types of users in your Django application, how to manage multiple databases in your Django application, how to register models from different databases to your Django admin panel, or how to isolate app functionality from one another? Well, in this series, we're going to be looking at how to accomplish all of this. Then once you're done with this tutorial series, you'll have many more high level tools that you can use to build your Django applications. Now, before we dive into writing code, let's take a look at what we'll be building. We will be building a real estate app. Except in this series, I'll only be building a Django backend API, since if I implement a front end portion to this with a front end framework, the series will be very long. And trust me, there is already quite a bit to accomplish with what I set to create right here. Although we can always imagine how the app would work if you had a visual front end as we go along, but for actually using our application, we'll be hitting our backend API endpoints using the Postman app instead of having a nice looking front end interface that we build. This real estate app is going to have technically three types of users in it. There will be normal users of the app. There will be realtors that are another type of user that will be allowed to create listings and publish them so that they are seen on the application. And then we'll also have our admin user that can log into the admin panel and manage data on the application. So these are the three that we see right here. What is also interesting with the admin panel is that you'll see in this series how you can register a model to the admin panel where you have multiple databases managing your model data. So we're really going to have two apps in this project. One will be a user app for managing our users. This will have its own database for managing user data and we'll have a listing app that will manage listing endpoints and have its own database for storing listing data. So here on this diagram, we can see these three different types of users that are all inheriting from the base user model. And then we also see that we have this listing tie to a realtor, although these two things will technically be separated. And we're going to see more of that as I go along. Now, even though there's only two apps and two databases we're managing, trust me, there's quite a lot to this where having just two apps with a database each is quite a bit of work to accomplish. Now let's get into the details of this project. First comes, how do we manage multiple types of users? One thing that often comes to mind when developers think about this is that you should have different user models to manage different types of users, but this isn't what you want to do. You always want to have just one user model in your application. And then a good way to separate user functionality is by having flags. Let's take into consideration a default Django application. You're already managing two types of users from the get go. You have normal users and an admin user. So how does Django distinguish these two very different user roles? Do they have a separate user model for a normal user and an admin user? No, they manage these two types of users with flags. For example, you have the is staff and is super user flags that are used where the is staff flag is for seeing whether the user is allowed to log into the admin panel and the is super user grants a user all permissions so they can create, edit and delete any database data that's registered to the admin panel. So to manage our other type of user, which is the realtor, we'll have an is realtor flag that we'll use to distinguish this user from the others. This user model wise will be the exact same as a normal user with the only difference being the is realtor flag being set. Just like how the only difference between a normal user and a super user is that the super user has the is staff and is super user flag set. And that's the only difference with the super users user model data itself compared to a normal user. Therefore, we'll be taking the same approach. As we see in this diagram, we have a single user model. And below we see our three types of users. Our admin user, which can manage all data in the app, assuming it's registered to the admin panel. We have our realtor, which will be able to create listings and normal users, where the only special thing a normal user can do that a logged out user can't is hit an endpoint to view the details of a listing. Now that we understand the users in the application, let's take a look at the two different services that we will have in our application. We will have a user app 
that will be our service for managing users in the overall application. And this user app will have its own user database that it manages. Here we see some of the data that's tied to a user model and we will be creating a custom user model to have things work how we want. And for real applications, it's recommended to always have a custom user model because later you'll also be able to make changes properly if anything about a user model needs to change. Our user model will have an email field that we will make unique. They'll have a required name field, a password, and some flags. We will have a manager where we define three functions. One will be for creating a normal user, one will be for creating a realtor user, and the last one will be for creating a super user. If we had a visual interface for our app, you can imagine we'd have a register page where someone could sign up to the app to be either a normal user who wants to view listings and contact realtors or sign up to be a realtor where they post listings on the app. Then our user app will also have endpoints for registering an account, retrieving the user details of an account, and to log in. Though the login functionality will technically be handled by the Django REST framework simple JWT package, which is an authentication package for allowing us to use JSON Web Token authentication. Then we will have a second app, which will be our listings app. This is where logic related to listings will be managed. Now the listing data in the database, we want it to be tied to a realtor. However, when managing multiple databases in Django, we cannot have things like a foreign key relationship between a model tied to one database and a model tied to another database. This means we cannot have a foreign key from our listing model to our user model. This is because Django doesn't provide support for foreign key and many-to-many -many relationships spanning multiple databases, and any relationships defined in your models must be internal to a single database. Therefore, instead what we can do is have a realtor record in our listing model. That will be an email field that would be the realtor's email that they signed up with. Emails in the user model are defined as unique, and so this is an approach that we can rely on to have our listing model tied to a particular realtor. Then there will be a number of other fields for a listing, which would include things like the title, the slug, which would be a unique identifier for the listing, the address, city, state, zip code, and so forth. Then one key piece of information in this listing model is the is publish field, which would dictate whether the listing shows up on the overall application and is visible to other users. Then as for some endpoints that this listing service will manage, we'll have endpoints that can be hit by normal users and technically any user, but normal users will probably want to make use of these. And this is an endpoint for getting all the published listings in the app, getting the details of a listing that's published and also searching for listings. So these are all of these that I listed out right here. And then we have these as well. So the realtor account will have permission to use the following endpoints getting listings belonging to a particular realtor, whether the listing is published or not, getting the detail of a listing belonging to a realtor, whether it's published or not, creating a listing tied to the realtor, updating a listing, updating just the is published field of a listing tied to a realtor, and deleting a listing belonging to the realtor making the request. So that is all of these right over here. So this means that realtors will have CRUD functionality over the listing data. Now let's take a look at how our overall application will be able to determine what database it should use to store user data and listing data. Since when a user is created, we want this specifically to be stored in a particular database. And same with the listing, we want when this is created for it to be stored in a particular database that stores only listing data. So to accomplish this, we'll be using something in Django called a router. Each of our apps will have a router class and this will be used to direct data to the appropriate database. For our user app, we'll have an auth router, which you can call whatever you want, but I chose to go with that name. And this will make it so that when we migrate our custom user model to the database, this migration will happen specifically on the user database. It will make it so that model relationships between models in our user database will be allowed, although we'll only have one model, which is our user model. And when we want to read and write data, this auth router will direct us to the correct database, which is our user database. Therefore, this auth router is what will be responsible for allowing logic we create in our user app to be tied to this user database. Then we will also have a listing router, and this will instead make migrations for our listing model, which will be migrated to our listing database. And this will allow for relationships between models in the listing database, although once again, we'll only technically create one model here, and that will be our listing model. And finally, when we want to read and write data for listings, this listing router will be used to direct us to the correct database that manages this listing data. Now let's briefly take a look at our admin users. 
Now our admin users will be managing users on the overall application as well as listings. The thing is, we will have users managed by one database and listings managed by another. So we will see how we can have this data present in the admin panel for the admin user to manage. The admin panel will be allowed full CRUD functionality over both of these pieces of data. However, remember that we cannot have things like a foreign key relationship between our listing model to our user model. This means that we can't have something like a model cascade behavior happen, where if a realtor user gets deleted, then all listing data tied to that user also gets deleted. Though we'd clearly want this sort of behavior, so how would this work? Well, when a user gets deleted, and in particular a realtor user, since this is the only user that will have listings tied to them, then we want to go through all listings in our listing database and delete all listing data that has a realtor field. So here I use this orange to distinguish that. So we have a realtor model with the email field, and then this is what our listing data would look like in the listing database. So we have this realtor field, and then this realtor field is just the email of the realtor user. So again, we want to go through all listings in our listing database and delete all listing data that has the realtor field, which is the realtor's email. And then that matches the email field of the realtor user that got deleted. This is something that we'll see how to accomplish where when we register the user model to the admin panel, we will override the delete behavior to delete listing data as well. So we will also need to expose from our listing app a way to delete listings based on the realtor field value. This will also be something that isn't exposed as an API endpoint Point, but will be strictly something that's used only when a user gets deleted from the admin panel. And that is it for the overview. There's a lot that was covered. And by the end of the series, you will have a great idea of how to manage multiple databases and multiple users in your applications. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Now that you have a high level visual of what it is that we'll be building. Now in the next video, it will make much more sense when we start coding what we're actually trying to do during the implementation phase of this series. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button. It goes a long way to help a channel like mine grow and get recognized so others can benefit from the videos I release as well. Also, I have links in the description that you can check out. I have one for an e-commerce course that you can check out if you're interested in learning to develop an application like that. I also have a link for joining my Web Development Kings Facebook group. That way, if you want to personally ask me something, then you can go right ahead and do that, and I will happily help you out. It doesn't cost you anything, so if you're scratching your head about something, then you can go right ahead and ask me to help you out. Only questions I probably won't answer are if you want me to help you build some kind of personal project, as I don't quite have the time for that sort of thing, but anything else will be just fine. You can also post something in the group itself. That way other developers in the group can help you out with something as well. The group is all about growing your expertise as a developer. So if you're interested in that, then go ahead and click that link in the description and join the family. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notification bells. That way you don't miss out when I release a new video and I will see you in the next one.